welcome back to Woodhill Park. And yes, I've gone and bought a t-shirt. But uh, I won't be giving these ones away. £15 each. Uh, it's a bit expensive, really. <laughs> but anyway, just to keep with it, I've now got a t-shirt. I, uh, well, in this one, I've been not doing a hell of a lot because of the cold weather. And at the moment, is it... Uh, it's Storm Eunice, I think it's called, isn't it? It's just hitting at the moment and it's making the, the loft creak a bit. So hopefully the layout comes through this in one piece. But uh, what I have been doing is adding new stock, including, well, mainly the Dapol Class 52 Duke before uh, they all went out of stock because they're quite a good price and I've been told they're a good model. Also, I've been adding second-hand stock that I've been picking up from toy fairs and uh, weathering it. Uh, I've uh, weathered my Class 40 and I've also put a TTS chip in that. So I've been doing lots of bits and pieces. Oh, I mustn't forget, I've also been improving stock, including my DMU, Lima DMU that is, bringing it up to a, a spec that you can run on uh, DCC. So I've put a, a new motor in it, one of these CD motors. I've put a socket in it to put an 8-pin decoder in it. I've changed the wheels, um, buffers, and I've got a lot more plans to do things to it. So that will be in the following video. So I won't waffle on no more, as I say. So enjoy the video. Just thought I'd share this with you. I've just come back from my local toy fair. Well, not too local. And uh, I've just picked up a, a load of sliding wall wagons by Backman. In pretty good condition. The guy was had a price of £15 each, which nowadays is really good. And uh, he was willing to go down to £12 each and I, I bought seven of them. So, I say second hand, I think is the way to go. Um, the auction site online, uh, some of the prices just run away, so you won't probably get a bargain on there like this. But, uh, it's upside down on the camera, but if you go to your local toy fair and support them, you're likely to eventually come across bargains like this which are nowadays few and far between so it was an excellent buy I've got seven of these and uh, yeah tw £12 each also I, I picked up a um, an Oxford lorry a Fordson from the 1980s because I haven't got many commercial vehicles on my layout just to add some uh, variation to the mode of transport that I've got around the station. I picked up this lorry which had £10 on it and I got this for eight and online they want £12 plus and then the postage on top. So it's a no-brainer really if you can go to a toy fair and support them because a lot of them have been struggling due to Covid uh, you might well pick yourself some bargains up like I have. It certainly saves money rather than buying the new stuff. And uh, I do know one of the, the store holders quite well and he very nicely just said I've got a present for you and, and gave me this as well. So I've got this Wren wagon, get out the right way. Uh, everything looks a bit strange on the screen because it's back to front but I've got it out the right way now. But yeah, very nice of the guy. Um, but yeah, I just said I've got a present for you and gave me this. So, toy fairs are definitely worth supporting. I even picked up a book for a pound. Can't go wrong with that, can you? A pound. When it was new, it was £2.95. And that was. 1985, is it? So, go and support that local toy fair and maybe 
you'll pick up some bargains like this. Right, just time to place them on the layout. So I think I'll put the Royal Mail truck on the bridge. As for the sliding wall vans, the VDAs, I've just got them ready for the layout, done the back to backs, changed them over to hunt couplings, so they've all got magnetic couplings, and they're all running nicely around the layout at the moment. Just need to be weathered eventually. Now I've got nine of these wagons, so a nice rake that didn't cost me the earth. guess I've been back to another toy fair and uh, the same guy was there with some more uh, sliding wall vans so I think he anticipated after I see him last that I'd, I'd be after a few more but uh, I've now built the rake up to 12 so that's enough so I was only after three more in fact but uh, he had these unboxed sliding wall vans and uh, in pretty good condition 
you add them up for ten pound each, which is a steal really anyway. And he did a deal. And I got the three for uh, twenty five pound. You can't knock that, can you? So three more for me rake, which is now complete. And these toy fairs are really worth going to. And uh, well, it's a form of recycling, really, because they do buy obviously layouts off people and uh, sell them on, but uh, they don't uh, sell them on for some of the prices that the big boys are second hand. So you do far better by going to toy fairs, and uh, it's a very friendly atmosphere. You always can talk to people, they're full of knowledge about the hobby and uh, some of them are even ex-railway workers so you get to talk and interact and hear some of their stories so it's a very good social place to go as well so I, I can't endorse them enough so in these expensive times go seek out your local toy fair Another project I've got on the go is updating a, a Lima 117 to DCC. I'm uh, going to attempt to change the motor over for a CD motor and change the wheels so the flanges on the wheels don't short out the frogs in the points and uh, 
Yeah, just change it over to DCC. Um, I need to change the wheels because I don't want tyres, you know, rubber tyres on it. Um, so I might be adding extra weight to it. But uh, there's certain old uh, locos, you might say, that uh, possibly are worth sort of bringing across to DCC. But uh, not all of them, but I tend to think this uh, Lima class 117's worth doing because even if you know it hasn't got the extra weight and the strength in the motor to pull a, a long rake it doesn't need to because uh, it's only going to pull probably a, a carriage or two and a, a dummy so it should be well able to do that so providing it runs smoothly I'm uh, going to probably keep it on the layout but uh, we'll have to see how it goes as uh, this is just an ongoing project that I'm going to tackle next the Lima 117 is still a, a good example of a much loved DMU and there's a fair amount of good detailing on it for an old um, loco so I think it's worth saving and in light of the new price increases definitely worth bringing across to the DC so side of things and adding to the layout I'll uh, have to do quite a few things to improve it you know as well as the wheels and the motor and things but uh, It'll be an interesting project to do and uh, just saves this sitting idle in a drawer really. I've I've got uh, at least one coach if not two to go with it as well as uh, a dummy coach. I need to uh, change the buffers because although these ones have large buffers the other ones that I've got have only got the small Lima buffers so I'll have to source some buffers that match these ones but uh, a well worth project I think probably add a uh, driver and people and, you know there's uh, a lot of uh, potential in it really rather than spending on these rather dear DM news what are coming out at the moment from all sides really you know Backman Hall me you know 200 pound jobs they're just uh, getting silly really I just had a closer look and uh, I've got a motor end and two carriages and a dummy end and I don't think they cost me much more than 50 quid for the lot in the past so they're, they're just going to waste so I think uh, it's definitely worth giving it a go and see see what I can come up with uh, running them on DCC
I'm pleased to say my CD and DCC conversion of my Lima class 117 was a complete success and I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. It uh, runs really well, I've given it a bit of extra weight, it's got a DCC socket in it, 9 pin, 8 pin socket and 9 pin, haven't invented that yet, an 8 pin DC socket and uh, I blanked out the windows where you would see the wires and possibly the chip just with a bit of black plastic card but uh, other than that the model doesn't look any different I got some large buffers on the way to uh, fit out the rest of the carriages and the dummy at the other end for some reason this has got large buffers on the driving uh, end but uh, I think it's a later model that's why quite quiet not as quiet as modern day trains but certainly quieter than the conventional old Lima It's got a good top speed and it's running really well. Very pleased with this. Yeah. Motor, two coaches and a dummy DMU for not very much money. I think it's only cost me around about £25 to do the job. And it's given me a train that well, could cost anything from £100 to £200. Another new addition to my layout, I've uh, spent out on a new class 52 just before you know they sell out because of the because the prices out there there are some old prices a bit still expensive I, I got this for 125 pound so it's, it's pretty cheap for what's coming price rise wise but uh, I was talking to a guy at the toy fair and he was saying how good and reliable these are and uh, he recommended it I mean that's the sort of thing you'll hear if you go to a toy fair you'll, you'll pick up uh, information on reliability of these things as well but uh, so I forked out a bit more money than I wanted to at the moment but Hopefully I've got one of the uh, last um, locos like this, at this price. So, I haven't uh, done anything with it yet, I haven't even taken it out of the box. But uh, I shall be adding this to the layout and uh, obviously changing it over to DCC. And maybe further into the future I'll be uh, adding sound to it as well but uh, yes it's probably one of the few sort of things still in stock at the old prices and uh, worthwhile adding to my layer I thought uh, at the end of the day it's right up the early end I mean I'm the 1980s and I think these were scrapped in 1977 so I'm probably pushing it but then I've got uh, class 43s you know the one HST um, one, uh, 125s in blue and grey liveries so they were around at the same time so these would have been going out so 
maybe after I've had it for a little while I'll, I may do a bit of a heavy weather job on it but uh, I need to have it for a little while before I weather things generally I, yeah, I feel I need to use them for a while before I do that but uh, it would have been at the end of its life in probably 1977 or thereabouts so I'll have to portray that at one point by making it uh, look a little bit sort of uh, worn in you might say so I'm going to add this to the layout so I'll carry on and uh, unbox this in front of the camera even though I don't really do unboxings but might as well as I'm sitting here but uh, you get a nice detail pack I've been told that there's some roof hooks or panel hooks that are very hard to fit and some people leave them off but uh, I'll cross that bridge when it comes to it but there's some head codes and other bits and pieces it is full of detail and uh, I shall get it up and running first make sure it runs on DC first and then chip it with a decoder and uh, run it for a while and then think about what detailing I want but, uh, yeah, looks like this slides out carefully of documentation and I think these undo from the sides if I remember here yeah. undo from the sides well packaged sort of protected from either end with rubbers and whatever so it's damage proof really I would have thought and it all looks really nice in one piece like another lovely model right, carefully take it out put that aside <coughs> there she is dapple class 52 just have to add that this has got to be one of the most easiest locos I've ever had to uh, convert to DCC. Four screws and the, the cover just comes off easy, no problem. Everything's laid out really neat inside, really tidy. One of the best sort of quality um, sort of locos I've, I've found really, I mean, so far. This beats all the locos I bought. So Dapple's done a real good job here. And the detailing pack is amazing. You know, it comes detailed one end already. So you, you, know, you don't have to worry about detailing it. But if you don't like that, if you want a coupling, you've got to fittings to change over. So you can have a cu coupling fitting. And uh, should you want to go detail both ends, you can do that as well because there's another sort of buffer beam that you can add and take away. 
And as for the buffer beam detail, there's so much in the in the kit. It's unreal. There's all sorts of bits in there. Probably won't use half of them, but you know it's amazing what you get. So well impressed at the moment. So well, all there's to do now is carry on uh, programming it and putting it on the layout. Uh, she's all running all I need to do now really is add any detailing I want and name plates but I'll do that at a later date at the moment uh, just running her uh, just getting used to how she uh, performs really the lights and uh, her functions are a bit muddled up because I've just used uh, a standard four function backman 21 pin chip and uh, it really wants its own dapple chip because there's more functions on it which would account for like the cab lighting and other stuff being usable which uh, aren't usable with the backman but I'm not going to rush to do that because I'm thinking maybe in the future of putting sound in it so that will be just a waste of money buying a, a uh, dapple chip so it'll run perfectly all right on this backman so till i've made my mind up i won't spend any more money another great addition to my layout western duke class 52. now she's running she's got a nice smooth crawl on her also, some of the noise she makes actually sounds a bit like she's actually got sound and a bit of an engine in there as she goes past occasionally. So, yep, 
nice train and very well built and good value for money compared with the other logos out there at the moment quality of build is very good 